disappearance a few days later from a man named Victor Halstaff who looked me up at work. Halstaff was an official of the company which maintained the cable and employed Norfolk. Well, uh, this man, the man that was drowned, was he just doing a purely routine job? That's right. That's what makes it so hard for us to understand. He was just checking cable. Job he'd done before a dozen times. Is all this cable underwater? Yeah. Runs out from shore about 20 miles to Sea Rock Island. Service is the Radford Chemical Corporation. Oh, yeah, I've seen the plant from the water. That's the place that makes uh, chemicals out of uh, kelp and seawater, isn't it? That's right. The plant covers the entire island, so they have this special cable. Of course, eventually, that'll be replaced with the radio telephone. But until it is, we're going to have to send men down there from time to time to check that line. Well, that's a white sandy bottom out there. Visibility is very clear. And still, an experienced man like Norfolk was drowned. Now, before we send any more men into there, we want the entire area checked by somebody who knows what it's all about. Underwater. We'd like you to be that man. Well, I don't know exactly what you want me to look for. Neither do we. We'd like you to look. I took the assignment because I'm interested in anything that concerns underwater safety. My first approach was to retrace Dave Norfolk's route the day he disappeared. I found the cable on the bottom and started to follow it, observing everything within viewing range. Something there might be the clue to his disappearance. was following the same course from the opposite direction. I stopped. It passed me by as I expected. I wondered if such an encounter might have frightened Dave Norfolk into panic. I couldn't know then that it was no native of the sea, but fellow human beings who had doomed him.
tiny piece of tape stirring in the current on the cable brought me to the beginning of an understanding of Norfolk's fate. It had been wrapped around the cable recently. Sea growth had been scraped away, leaving a bare spot in the insulation, and there were marks that looked as if they'd been made by a clamp. Someone had been tapping the cable at this point. Someone who didn't want to be discovered at it by Dave Norfolk. I surfaced immediately, found Hallstaff, and went with him to the Radford Chemical Plant on Sea Rock Island. The president of the company might know who'd be interested in tapping his phone line. His credentials satisfy me, Mr. Hallstaff. Besides, I know of Mr. Nelson. Yes, Mr. Nelson, there is reason to tap our telephone cable, and a very important reason, too. It involves many, many millions of dollars and possibly lives. And we may not be too far off. Is that right, Mr. Ludwig? Our company is conducting a very special research program on this island, developing a, a whole new group of chemicals, utilizing simple seawater. It has an enormous industrial importance and military importance. Until you walked into this room, we had every reason to believe that this was totally and completely top secret. When do you say this man died, the one who drowned? Last Friday, sometime around one o'clock by our closest estimate. Friday at one? Then this is worse than I thought. How so? Each Friday at one o'clock, it's automatic. Our executives assemble for it. We make a special call to our home office in the east. In that call, we provide for a complete verbal report on the week's progress, including everything that we don't care to put down on paper. In the past three weeks, our Friday conversations have contained information that is, well, is practically priceless. Has all of your important data been transmitted by now? No, there's more, including the breakdown analysis of our key seawater element. Well, they're undoubtedly aware of that. Hey, we're listening in again next Friday, you can be sure of that. We have a device that could warn us the instant a tap has been attached to the cable. Oh, that's great. Can you uh, get it connected by Friday? I think so. I will be there. We were there, Friday at one o'clock. Our staff and I on my boat idling along above the cable. Ludwig and a technician in his office manning the detection equipment. We had a radio channel open between us and a code worked out that we hoped wouldn't tip off anyone listening in. It's after one o'clock. You should have heard from him by now. Want to give him a buzz? Okay. Dolphin, this is Angler. Anything new? Over. What did I tell him? Nothing. Angler to Dolphin. We're underway, but we haven't sighted anything yet. Over. Over now. We waited. When Hallstaff and I received the word that a tap was on, I was prepared to follow the route of the cable till we found another boat drifting above it. That one should be the diver's boat, and we'd have them red-handed. Better tell them to stand by. Angler to Dalton, we have a possible sighting. Over. Standing by. This is it. Hello, Dolphin. We have a positive sighting. A large school of tuna. Over. Roger, over and out. A large school of tuna. That was our code for a sure tap. We took off at full speed. It wasn't fast enough, for it soon became apparent there was no other boat to find. 
We searched the empty horizon in vain. We had the entire sea to ourselves. Whoever was tapping that cable below us had reached it some other way. I'm going to go out and take a look, huh? Good idea. Take over the wheel, will you? the cable had been tapped. I found nobody. Nothing. The tapper or tappers were too smart to return to the same place. But all I needed underwater was a couple of hundred yards between us I wouldn't be able to see them. I started following the cables, certain that they were nearby, and hoping that I was going in the right direction. And there they were, listening in all right with a device that I'd never seen before and recording the conversation on a tiny, waterproof wire recorder. There were two of them to one of me. I knew now that they were the killers. I had to take them by surprise. hidden by the grass, but I was afraid that my bubbles would give me away. I breathed as little and as slowly as I could. Luckily, the sound of their bubbles covered the sound of mine. surface would take care of the first man when he came up for air. I went after his buddy. I lost him completely for a time. 
but his direction was generally back towards Sea Rock Island. So I kept swimming that way and desperately hoped for a glimpse of him. Finally, there he was, racing into a water tunnel of some kind that led from the Ratford plant. the divers had reached the cable without being discovered. They had come from the plant itself. shaft led straight up. There was light coming from above. This had to be the diver's route. that I was aware of when I came out of the water was the sound of turbines or generators nearby. That explained the water tunnel. I saw his tanks and diving equipment still dripping on the floor. out long enough for me to find a telephone and get Ludwig and the police down here. And once he and his buddy explained who they worked for and why, 
the Radford Company could go safely back to its top secret work. Sure that it was top secret. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.